Hi everyone, uh, my name is Tina and today I'm just going to show you how to insert a lifeline so that you can rip back some work. Now, in a recent podcast I mentioned that I was going to rip back this uh, project because I did not like how I picked up my wrapped stitches here. You will see here that you see kind of a line. I mean, even at a distance, you can see that there is definitely something going on in that spot. And at first I thought it would be okay because you think of like bus darts and stuff like that and you kind of see that kind of thing for like a bus dart. But this really isn't a bus dart. This is um, short rows because of how the sweater is constructed. And when I did the second short row section up here, you will notice that along here you don't see those same type of wraps because of how I picked up the wraps when I knit them together with the stitch it was wrapped around. So the bottom line is, is when I did this section here, I did not pick up my wraps correctly. And I really am not liking how this is looking. And after doing this one over here, I like how it looks so much better. So I'm going to rip out back to one row before where the wraps started so that I can um, redo it. So what I'm going to show you today is how to go about doing that. Now, first of all, I need to get the row below. Now I could try and pick up this row, which is the first row that's wrapped, but that's going to be a little bit dif more difficult. So I'm just going to go one row below, and if I have to knit one more row before I start doing my wraps, that's okay also. So what I first need to do is I need to follow this stitch along to get to the end of the row. And I'm going to go start at this end of the row first because at this end of the row we have some lace and it's going to be a little bit more difficult to pick up the lace on this side. So I'm going to start with this end so I can get the easy part of the stockinette taken care of first and then I can worry about doing the lace. So I need to choose a stitch. Whatever stitch it is that you're going to use, I need to choose a stitch and follow it along. And if you have difficulty following the stitch, all you have to do is kind of tug a little bit to see where that stitch is going. You know, and you can, you can follow it along all the way over here. And I went ahead and I put a stitch marker on here because I didn't want to take the time to do that here on camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of turn this so it's at an easier angle for me to pick up the stitches and hopefully it'll make it easy for you guys to see as well. So I'm going to start by inserting my needle into this first stitch on this row. I'm going to try and get close enough where I can see and not have my head in the frame. So I'm going to start by picking up this stitch here and then I'm going to pick up the right leg of every stitch on that same row. And you want to make sure that you stay on the same row. And if you get confused, you can use another um, needle. Let me just pull one real quick. Um, you can use another needle to just make sure that you're following the same row. And you're just going to pick up the right leg on every for every stitch. And you just follow it along. Now, what should happen is that as I get closer, I'm hoping that this is all in the same. I can pull this through a little bit just to give me a little bit of, I want to make sure I don't go too far with this. Um, and then just keep, just keep picking this up, the right leg of every stitch. And when I get here, I'm actually one row lower than I really want it to be. So then I need to look at this again. Let me turn it back this way. And yes, I actually picked up the wrong row because this row that I'm on that I've picked up, I immediately went down to the row below. So I'm going to start again 
this is why we put a lifeline in so that um, if you this is you have your you get your get it all right the first time and then when you pull it out it'll be so much easier so let's try this again and let's make sure that we go to the correct stitch next to it here we go and then again only the right leg of the stitch is what you want and this will be enough to be able to rip your work out and then be able to pick up all of these stitches back on the same row. And it is kind of at a strange angle for me to see it, which is why I'm kind of struggling a little bit. But when you're looking at it in real time and you're have it flat on a table like this because it is it does make it a lot easier to lay it flat on a table and have really good lighting and I think I have fallen below again all right yes I have I can't seem to get that so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start here Now I am on the correct row. And I can move forward. And if you need to, I mean it's 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 okay to to take another look, stretch out the knitting a little bit. Sometimes that helps if you can stretch out the knitting and follow and follow the, the thread of the yarn. I think now that I'm on the right row at the beginning, I think, see it kind of looks like that's the wrong row, but that is actually the right row for that. Um, it looks like it goes up there, but that's not, it doesn't. Um, so let's keep going. Hopefully this is the right row now. And when I get to this stitch here, you will see that I am one row below where this first wrap is. This stitch is actually the stitch that's wrapped, and that's the wrap that goes around the stitch. And what I what I did wrong here was Instead of sticking my needle into this, the underneath the wrap and into the, the stitch that it was wrapped around, what I did was I lifted the wrap up and put it on my needle and then I knit them together. And that's what happened here. That's what caused this. So when I get to doing this again, I will do another tutorial about how to pick up a wrapped stitch because I know that that is is something that a lot of people struggle with. They're not quite sure how to pick up a wrap stitch. So if you are looking for a tutorial on that, I will do one shortly on that as well. So now I'm just gonna continue along until I get to the lace section. And then I will come back and show you how to work through doing the lace section. Okay, so I finished putting in the lifeline in the stockinette section. And let me tell you, that was really, really easy. Then I got to the lace section. And lace would probably not be so difficult except for the fact that I have a double decrease for each one of these here. Okay? And trying to figure out where the stitches are and which row it's on has really frustrated me. But instead of just ripping the work out and not trying to salvage a little bit, what I'm going to do is just do the absolute best that I can. More than likely, I will not be on the correct row. In fact, I might try and go a row up from where I am here because I know that this is where I want to pick up my stitches here. But if I go a row up, in this section, if I don't have quite all the stitches, that gives me another extra row or so to slowly tink back the, that section um, in which to pick up those stitches. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of um, 
go through these stitches here like I, I I'm not even sure if this is gonna be the right the right row because it's hard to tell this is green on this stitch but is that this stitch here I'm not really sure actually um, and I'm pretty sure that I'm not picking up all the stitches here but I'm just like I said I'm just gonna do the best that I can and I will have to once I rip back this section I will have to do it rather slowly and probably have to tink back some of the um, some of the rows here in just this section. So like I said, I'm just going to try and follow it along the best that I can, only picking up the right edge. Now, like I said before, um, and this is a different, a different lifeline as well. I cut the other one and made a, a second one. Like I said before, you just need to pick up the right um, leg of the stitch. And because there is a double decrease here, and I'm only picking up one stitch, more than likely I'm not um, picking up, I'm probably not picking up the yarn overs, which I'm hoping is the case. Again, I'm not sure if it's going to work exactly right, but we're just going to, we're going to go with it. And I'm just trying to be consistent as I come across and pick up the same the same stitch like I'm looking at it and saying okay so this one I went just below where I see the um, the yarn over here so when I get here I'm gonna pick up that one and then go just below that and then I'm gonna pick up this one and then I'm gonna look and I'm gonna say okay here's the the yarn over and I'm gonna pick up the one just below And then I'm going to look again and pick up the one that's just below. So I'm just being consistent here. And I'm going to do this with my left hand because of how I'm doing this from left to right. And that, But the, yeah, I'm just being consistent so that I'm trying to stay on the same row based on what I'm seeing here. So, oops. So again, I have my yarn over here, my yarn over grouping, and I'm gonna pick up the stitch below it. And I'm getting wrapped around my board here. I didn't need to pull that stitch out so much. It doesn't matter because we're going to be ripping it out anyway. And then the last section here, we just wanna make sure trying to keep my hand out of the way, that we're picking up the one row below. And this would work the same way if you um, were doing it from right to left instead of from left to right. You could pick up the right leg or you could pick up the left leg. But if you pick up the left leg, when you put the, need the stitches back on the needles, you will see that um, your stitches are on the needles incorrectly. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this back and then I will try and show you um, when I'm picking up the stitches again and how I work through this problem here with the lace. Okay, now as I was ripping this out, you will see I've still got this lifeline. This is the original lifeline that I put in. But I stopped ripping out up here. Because as I was ripping out, as I was getting closer and closer to the problem in question, I realized I don't have to rip out before I do all the wraps. I just have to rip out uh, right before I do the pickups. So I went ahead and I wove my needle doing the same thing like I did with the lifeline and the, the darning needle. I took my knitting needle and I just went through all those stitches. And so you'll see that the blue line here is actually my cable of my needle. Now, this process has been kind of a pain because of the fact that I am using um, two skeins of yarn here. So I'm 
I'm hoping that this is going to work because right now you're not seeing much of anything because I'm trying to keep from twisting all of this yarn together. So that is part of my problem here with ripping this back um, and trying to do it in such a way where I can keep the extra yarn from getting tangled. So let me see if I can get to where this lifeline is um, and hopefully I can we can move forward from there. Okay so I have gotten back to where this lifeline is and I am starting to have a little bit of an issue. Um, you'll see here that my yarn is going through my lifeline. This is because this stitch is actually picking up three stitches. Three stitches. So I think what I'm going to try and do is just use my needle to go through these stitches. I'm not sure. I need to pick up three stitches here. And because right now it's pulling through those three. Um, hmm. I still have one more row to take out. Let me see. And it's going to be like that all the way across. It's going to leave those two, those stitches connected. But let me see if I can pull out this row and then the next row. But again, we are working with two balls, so this makes it doubly difficult. So if you are working with one ball, it'll be so much easier for you. All right, so where are we? All right, so that's there. Now I want to pull this one out, but I don't want to get this all wound up on everything. Oh, this is more difficult than I thought it would be to try and show you how to do this. <laughs> but at least you'll see that even a simple process is not so simple when you involve multiple skeins and lace and what have you. So hang on. All right, where am I? All right, yeah, I'm not going to be able to pull that out. All right, let me go back over here. I see I need to pick up these stitches in order to figure out how we're going to go about doing this. And I'm not sure that I can do that. Um, I've got I've got yarn everywhere. <laughs> um, what is the best way to do this? I'm sorry. Um, well, I think the best way will probably be it's not it's, I don't know if it's the best way. It's, it's the way I can think of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and follow this thread, which is the thread that's pulling through like this. And then I'm going to pull this out. I'm sure that this is not exactly right but it'll hopefully get to me to where I want to go. So, yeah, that's a, that's a mess. I'm not sure if that's going to work, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attempt it. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to go back through and put my needle in. Oh, no, I want to go the one below. Um, so I'm trying, you see where I'm trying to follow the lifeline now? I don't know if this is going to work. And honestly, I thought about ripping, just ripping this whole thing out and just not dealing with it. Um, because it did not take me that long to do this much. And I'm feeling like I'm spending more time trying to finagle this um, this lifeline than it would be just to rip this whole section out. But I wanted to give it a try. Um, it's, it is kind of stressful. 
In fact, I'm just going to take this lifeline out because this is not helping me at all. <laughs> it would be easier for me just to tink these rows or be very careful when I'm pulling these out. Because actually, I don't even want to be on this row. I want to be on a different row. I want to pull this row out. And see, I'm still winding around this other this other one. That's part of my problem here. Mm. That's what I was trying to avoid. So I need to pull this whole thing through here. Hopefully that will alleviate that problem. And, and, and in addition to that, I think it made it worse. In addition to that, this yarn is very stretchy and springy and yeah, that made it worse. All right. Okay, and so that's causing a problem as well because it's very stretchy and springy. And I'm using a larger needle than I might normally use for this size yarn. Okay. So now I think we are back and the problem is, is now our yarn is over there. <laughs> so now we have to try and catch these stitches. So I'm thinking that it's this. I'm hoping that you're seeing this. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm just catching these last stitches. Now, I may have to evaluate this and see if I'm missing some yarn overs or what have you. And I'm actually gonna have to pull through, I'm gonna have to go to the other end because my, my yarn is at the other end over there. And I'm, I'm almost certain that I'm missing some yarn overs here. Like there's supposed to be yarn overs here, but I'm not worrying about that right now because I can read my knitting and once I pick up the stitches and secure everything so that nothing is going to be running away with me, I can go back as I'm doing the next row or as I'm tinking and I can pick up the stitches that I missed. Now if you have difficulty reading your knitting to know where a yarn over goes, then you might have to do a little bit more work with your pattern to make sure you're on the right, right row. So I'm just picking up these stitches right now. Just to get them all on. A couple of them I think I've, I've got on the wrong way. Um, you always want to make sure that the right leg of the stitch is in the front. Okay, so now I've got all the stitches on there. Like I said, I am missing my yarn overs on here, but I can pick those up as I come back um, because I'm on a wrong side row. So now all I have to do is purl my stitches, but um, the thing is, is I didn't have to take out my entire work and it's not going to be that much difficulty to pick up those yarn overs. So even though I struggled with it, I'm hoping that this tutorial will help you in trying to pick up stitches for a to rip back your project. So you will do it the right way the first time. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now. As always, thanks for joining me, and I hope you enjoyed the show. Please feel free to contact me with your comments or suggestions, as I am always trying to improve the show. You can find me on Ravelry, Instagram, and YouTube as Blooming Knitter. You can also find me on Plurk, Twitter, and Pinterest as Blooming Knitter, but I don't frequent those sites as often. I post show updates on Twitter and Facebook, and sometimes to Google Plus and Plurk. I am Miss Aerobics on MyFitnessPal and Fitbit. You can always find all the old episodes as well as links to the tutorials on the blog at www.knittingblooms.com. And you can also follow the show on Facebook. 
You can email me at knittingblooms at gmail.com and show notes can be found at knittingblooms.com.